this is Julia Bita Halik, and in this video, I'm going to teach you how to make a strung necklace. I know a lot of our videos are bead weaving and embroidery, but there's something to be said for just a really nice strung necklace. And so I want to show you how to make it. And that includes working with the beading wire, but I'm also going to show you how to crimp beads, apply crimp bead covers, thread and wire protectors, how to combine chain with a strung necklace, attach a clasp, and also try to impart um, upon you some just different design tips if you're perhaps new to beading, just getting started, and want to have some uh, tips and words of advice. So what we're going to need for this particular project is we're going to need some beading wire. Now beading wire you always want to cut with a pair of cutters. You never want to cut it with your scissors. And we're going to use a 19 strand beading wire. And this is 0 0.015 inch. So that's a really good, basic, nice quality beading wire to start with. You'll see different beading wires have different numbers of strands and different thicknesses as well. So this is a good one that uh, works with a lot of different projects. Now we're going to be using a whole combination of beads. So we're going to be using some gemstone beads. This is pyrite, some wood beads, bead caps, little metal beads, and then these beads here are called UFO beads. They are Czech glass, and I have some over here. So I'm gonna recreate the same necklace, but with a different color of UFO, just so you can also see how a design changes when you change one element of it. So that's a good thing to keep in mind if maybe you're making jewelry to sell. You don't always have to come up with a new piece. You can just change the colors around a little bit. Now, because I really wanted to make this an all-in-one video showing every aspect of making a strung necklace, I'm also going to show you not only how to crimp your crimp bead, but how to apply a crimp bead cover to be able to cover that crimp bead and thread and wire protectors, which are super handy if you're going to be doing something like this, where you're attaching the beading wire to chain. And these chains are actually open link chains, which I'll explain to you a little bit later what that means and why you would then really want a thread and wire protector. And in terms of tools, we're gonna to be using bead stoppers, a pair of crimping pliers. I have the pocket crimpers, which are really cute and adorable. I have a pair of cutters and I have two pairs of chain nose pliers. I'm gonna set these tools aside for a moment. I'm gonna pick my other color of UFO bead to do the variation on this necklace. So there's a whole bunch to choose from. I'm gonna hold up a couple so you can see there's purple, which would be really pretty. We could do a white, which would be interesting. And I think though for this one, I wanna do the black. And here's just a design tip. You can do black and brown together. That's totally fine. It goes with a lot of different outfits. I know it's kind of an old uh, fashion wisdom that you don't ever wanna combine the black and brown, but you can. And I'll show you how it's gonna look in this project. So I'm gonna clear the UFOs to the side and I'm gonna cut the strand that these guys came on with my cutters. And I'm gonna cut myself some beading wire. So you'll wanna have an idea of how much beading wire you're gonna to wanna to start with and you're gonna base that idea upon how long you want your necklace to be. So let's say you wanna make a 24 inch long necklace. Well, you wouldn't just cut 24 inches of beading wire, you would cut at least 28, 30, because you need a couple inches on either side to be able to crimp your crimp bead. So for this one, because I've already done this before, I am just going to lay this necklace out and use it as a guide. So here would be the base length, but I do want to extend it a little bit on each side to make sure I have enough to work with. and I'm just cutting it. You can see I have lots of beading wire left over for another project. Now I'm gonna take a bead stopper and to open it, you just pull the ends together to squish them and you're gonna put it on the end just like so. And that holds it so you can string on your beads and they won't fall off. And like I mentioned, I'm just gonna recreate this project. So we are going to start with a crimp bead. That's gonna be our very first bead. And I'm using a crimp tube. I very much prefer crimp tubes to crimp beads. I find they just work a lot, um, work a lot better for me. So some people like crimp beads, I love crimp tubes. And I am going to make a little slight variation in my design. So if you look here, 
under that crimp bead cover is my crimp tube and then I went right to one of these brown wood beads. I'm not going to do this in this one and I'm going to show you why because I didn't realize it till the very end. Look at the hole size of this wood bead. When you string it on, look what happens. The crimp tube slides inside of it and it can be actually pretty tricky to get it out and then when you're trying to crimp it, it's actually really hard. So I'm going to add a little bead cap. And now I won't have that problem, so it'll be really easy to get to my crimp tube. Now I'm just recreating this design, so I'm gonna string on 18 of these wood beads. Okay, I've got 18 on here. And now I'm gonna add my UFOs. And one thing I do wanna point out if you are designing jewelry, um, one tip is to vary not only the size of your beads, but the shape. It makes it really interesting. So I've got more of a flat rondelle. I've got this UFO, which is a really kind of asymmetrical bead. I've got this nugget bead, which is quite a bit smaller. And then I've got these perfectly round beads. So that adds some interest. I'm also making sure that I pick up my gold chain throughout the necklace. So it's not just the chain at the top. So it looks really cohesive, or at least I hope it looks cohesive. So after I've put on my wood beads, I'm gonna add my UFOs and I'm gonna do the black ones. And here's this shape. If you look at it from the top down, it's very much like an oval, but the hole is not in the center. And you can see that it does look like its name. It looks like a little UFO. So I need five of these. And then I need three of my little gold beads. Another advantage to the stopper is say you are designing a necklace and you get halfway through and you decide you wanna add something to the beginning, you just take off the stopper and add it. Or perhaps you decide you don't like the design at all, you just pull off the stopper, slide off all your beads and start over. As opposed to if you'd already crimped this crimp bead to begin with, you would then be losing some of your beading wire. So it's a nice way of making sure that you have the design you want and it's easy to change it. So I'm using the wood beads as spacers at this point between the UFOs. Okay, now I'm ready to add a bead cap. So if you've not used bead caps before, you wanna string it on in the direction that ends up cupping the bead. So we're gonna string it on like so, pull it down, and now it's going to cup this bead. Of course, if you have a bead cap that you really like the shape of and you want to face outward, that's totally fine too. That's the beauty of jewelry making. You can really do whatever you want. Point is to have fun. All right, so now I'm gonna use another little wood bead as a spacer. These bead caps are by Nun Design, so they're really nice quality. I also like the antique gold finish. So we've strung half of our necklace, a little more than half, and I'm just gonna repeat the same pattern on the other side. So this will be a symmetrical necklace, and they don't always have to be. If you are beading and you wanna do something asymmetrical, that's wonderful too. So don't feel like you're limited to making um, both sides match. For this particular design, that is what I wanted to do because I do have a lot of variation in my beads as it is. We started with a crimp bead and we're going to end with a crimp bead. And now you can take your other bead stopper and place it at the end. And now you can walk away and your beads aren't gonna go anywhere. So now the chain part. 
So I mentioned before that this is open link chain. And what that means is that the links are not soldered together. So you can open them and close them the same way you would open a, and close a jump ring. So that's really handy because it allows you to separate your chain links out and not lose any. And we're also gonna take advantage of that when it comes time to attach the clasp. So I have a foot of chain. And for this necklace, I wanna divide it in half. So I'm gonna use six inches on each side. I'm just gonna find that middle chain link, open it up and separate it out. So now I've got my two links and save these little scraps for some other project. You'll be able to use them somehow. Just use it as a nice big oval jump ring. So we're gonna attach one side of our strung piece to one side of the chain. And so what we're going to do at this point is we're gonna put on a little wire thread protector. So this is horseshoe shaped and it's got two really complete cylinders you're gonna put your wire through it, so one on each side, and you're gonna arch it over and put it down through the other side, just like so. Now before you put this through the crimp bead again, you're going to thread it through one of your chain links and you're gonna make sure that that chain link catches on the top side of the thread and wire protector. Now you're gonna go back down through your crimp tube. I know I've been using the word crimp tube and bead pretty interchangeably. Um, for this project, I, when I say crimp bead, I'm meaning a crimp tube. Okay. You wanna thread it through the crimp tube and a few other beads. And then you wanna pull. And the first side is always the easiest side to do. So you're gonna pull it nice and tight so the crimp tube is right up against the thread and wire protector. And there's two notches on your crimp pliers. There's one that's kind of bean shaped and there's one that's a little bit more oval shaped. So the one closest to your handles is the one you're gonna use first and you're gonna slip your crimp tube into that notch and you're going to squeeze. And so it makes it really like a crescent moon shape and then you're going to rotate it so it's standing on its end in the second notch, the one closest to the end of your pliers, and you're going to squeeze. And that's gonna fold the crimp bead or crimp tube over onto itself. So you see that little line there. So it basically went like this and it folded it. Now what you can do is you can pick up one of your crimp bead covers and it's easiest to pick it up with a pair of chain nose pliers with the opening facing out. And you're going to slide it over your crimp tube. And then you're going to squeeze it shut with those pliers. And that hides it. Now you can take your cutters and just trim off your tail. So one side is finished. So now what you wanna do is you wanna do the exact same thing on the other side. So at this point, slide all your beads down and you don't wanna pull it so tight that they become rigid. So here it's really rigid. So you wanna give it a little bit of slack and you're gonna do the exact same thing. You're gonna take your thread and wire protector first and place it onto your beading wire. Loop it around so it goes back down through the other side Grab your other piece of chain and make sure it catches in the loop. And now go back down through your crimp tube and a couple beads. At this point, you're gonna pull. And you see when you pull the tail, it cinches up your beads. So again, at this point, before you actually crimp it, make sure that the beads are not too rigid. Make sure they have nice uh, movement to them. 
holding your tail. So you want to hold both ends so you have nice, easy access to your crimp tube. You're just going to crimp it the same way you did the other one. And we're going to crimp. So it makes that little crescent shape. And then we're going to rotate. So it's sitting in that top notch. And squeeze it so it folds over onto itself. Grab your other cover. And slide it over it. And squeeze. So it looks just like a bead at this point. And trim your tail. So we are almost done. So we've got the bulk of our necklace done and now we need to attach the clasp. Two ways you can do this. If you have jump rings at home, you can definitely very easily just add a jump ring to the end here and then attach it like so. I like this project because I don't need to add jump rings. Um, I can just open the chain link. So I'm gonna use the end chain link like a jump ring. So I'm just gonna open it, attach it to my clasp, and this is a toggle clasp. So it's got a round circle shape and then it's got a bar that's gonna go through it. So let's do that on the other side as well. it through and now we can go ahead and latch it so the bar is going to slide through the round and when you pull it it catches and we're done with our strung necklace so now I want to show you the two side by side so they do look similar but just a little bit of difference with that color variation on the UFO bead but there we have two strung necklaces and we've gone ahead and we've done all the little finishing touches with the crimp bead covers, the thread and wire protectors, the bead caps. So those all make a difference when you're making stringing projects. I hope you enjoyed this overview of how to make a strung necklace along with some tips along the way. You can find all the supplies you've seen here as well as many other tutorial videos teaching you how to bead at beadaholic.com.